Hey, what's up everybody? Nick Pierce here for Tune Track Products. Today I'm going to be giving you a quick demo of Superior Drummer. Uh, I'm just going to run through a couple little quick tips and tricks here and there and give you a basic uh, run through of, of the Superior Drummer interface so that you have a better idea of um, how easy it is to use and more or less how to streamline um, the creative writing process when you're going through and you want to achieve the sounds that you need to be able to uh, function normally in a writing atmosphere. Um, just give you some little hints and tips on things to uh, get you through it. So let's get started. First off, uh, you got the construct page. This page consists of all the different drums and cymbals. Each drum and cymbal has got a drop down arrow here. If you click on this guy, it gives you the different drum options or cymbal options. For example, the snare drum right now that I'm using is a 7x14 uh, Tama Jump Tepesta uh, signature snare. Sorry for being a little slow on that one. Um, but yeah, and then on all the other drums, I'm using uh, Star Classic Bubinga. And then the cymbals are just some various different stuff. So anyways, you'll see that some of these drums have X's on them, like these splashes and stacked up front, and then also this two snare drum and kick on the right hand side. The X drums are pulled from different um, expansions. So for example, these splashes and stuff are all pulled from the Metal Foundry expansion. If I click on them uh, in the right hand side where it says X drum, you'll see that it says Metal Foundry and then what that symbol is. So right here it says that's a Spock, which is a stack setup, and then um, you know you get your splashes, and then the ride symbol is ride two from Metal Foundry, etc. etc. So pretty much I just pulled splash sounds from another um, another expansion to obtain the sounds that I couldn't in Metal Machine. So right now the basic foundation of this kit is Metal Machine, and then I'm using pretty much accents from Metal Foundry. So with the X drums, uh, to create one, you're just gonna go in the right hand corner here and click new, and that'll bring up you your new X drum. Um, then you wanna choose what expansion you want it from. So right now I've got the Metal Foundry selected. I want to go to DFH, and that's gonna make me do it again. So go to new again. And then now you've got your DFH kick, and here's the different options you have for the kicks in DFH. Then if you want a snare drum, you can go to where it says kick here, it gives you a drop down, click on snare, and then you have the different snare drums you can use. So that is how you use X drums more or less. Um, a few more options for that is if you, imp if you just uh, loaded up this snare drum, X drum right here, and you want that snare to take place of your primary snare, which is this one here, and you want that snare, go to X edit, make sure this is selected, go to MIDI, then say still default, and by clicking that, that new X drum that you just created will steal the default position of, uh, of your snare drum. So I'm not going to do that, but that is how you do that. And then also you have a tools function here, um, in certain expansions like Avatar, uh, you have the option to change the um, if the bottom snare wires are on and also if you want to use drumsticks, brushes, rods, felt mallets. So you've got some different sounds that you can uh, obtain by using the tools function there. So moving on, I'm going to get rid of this X drum here. Uh, down below, you've got pitch and humanize functions. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get into the humanize stuff too much, but more or less, um, I've got random alternate uh, velocity and soft velocity selected. I don't know what all of those do, but I know that it makes it sound better. Um, more or less, what it does is it changes the way that um, Superior Drummer reacts to the uh, MIDI that you're playing. So, for example. I've got my MIDI editor right here. Say that this uh, Tom Fill or whatever has, you know, like it says 121 is the velocity and 127. Um, having any of those selected will change the way that Superior Drummer reacts to those velocities. Um, or at least that's what I've found. So that's how you use that guy. Uh, next up, uh, next up you've got the pitch function, which I use quite a bit. 
um, say some of these toms sound a little bit too flat or something and you just want to have a higher pitch uh, all you got to do is just go over here and say like this uh, floor tom here so I want it to be a little bit lower I'm gonna go say negative one and it's gonna sound terrible but it drops the tuning so that's how you change the pitch you can also do that for cymbals say you got a cymbal that sounds a little too dark and washed out uh, just take the pitch up a little bit and you're on your way um, so that's the pitch function down here in the bottom right you've got instrument uh, essentially what this does is just like a hot link to uh, right clicking so if I wanted you know say this first rack tom I could go here and go rack tom one and it would select that tom um, it's also telling me what uh, MIDI key it is in which is also very handy because when you're using your MIDI editor um, it's going to be different depending on your DAW but say I want to click on crash right and I want to see what MIDI note that is so here's my crash right I'm gonna to go to note properties and it tells me 049 C sharp 3 <clears throat> if I went into superior drummer and clicked on my right crash it says A2 right here, um, but this will change in a second. If I put in 049 C sharp 3 down here, 049 C sharp 3, you also have to use the spacing. Notice there's a space between 049 and C sharp 3. That is critical, so make sure you do that. Note properties 049 C sharp 3 is on this crash right. You see, I got it labeled right here. So when I go into Superior Drummer, Here's my right crash. And again, so you can see it's triggering that, that crash symbol. So that's pretty much how you put in your uh, MIDI key and assign um, note properties. Next up, you've got like your easy mixer um, right here, which is just a hot link to the actual mixer. If I select like, uh, I got my kick drum right right now it's at negative 3.7 if I go to my mixer it says negative 3.7 so I can change that here or in the mixer it's something I forgot in uh, X drums is you can change the microphone assignments so like for example uh, yeah we'll use that snare room go to microphone assignment and you can assign like these green guys are the assigned mics for the specific drums themselves so like you know you've got snare snare top snare bottom you've got a snare top and snare top or a snare bottom mic assigned to those drums itself same thing with kick drum you know you got a kick drum right and left um, that's pretty much kick drum right and then kick drum out uh, but then same thing with your toms uh, you know each drum is assigned its own microphone when you add in x drums you can add mics to those x drums as well so uh that's where you can find any microphone assignment information but that's pretty much how I use anything on the construct page other than loading and saving your projects make sure you do that because your DAW won't do it for you at least mine doesn't um, so save your projects before you try and quit a, uh, a session and then you can also choose uh, where it says construct up here you can choose the different uh, kits like I have a, a, a Tama right here so this is all Atomic Kit. If I wanted it to be a Ludwig, I could choose it to be select the uh, Ludwig Kit. So pretty handy stuff up there, and that pretty much sums up the Construct page. Moving on to the Mixer, uh, you've got a lot of different bleed control here. Uh, each bleed control um, item for each drum will give you this window here and you can select what drums are bleeding into that specific mic so like this is the uh, hi-hat right here I could select any of these drums to bleed into that mic and how much bleed it is receiving so on some of my overheads and ambients it's receiving a lot of bleed uh, it's receiving bleed from it's receiving everything pretty much um, but you can pick and choose if you got a China symbol that's too washed out and it's you know taken over your mix because it's in the ambience or something like that or in a room mic you can just eliminate that and isolate it to just overheads or something so that's how you change the bleed um, 
I leave it pretty raw for the most part. I don't get too deep into all the bleed settings. Um, and that's just a preference. Same thing with uh, all the effects stuff. Uh, you've got um, EQs, filters, gate, compression, transients. You'll see I only have got some of these on some of these channels. I'm only using some effects on uh, just a few channels just because um, one, it takes down the memory that it takes to load up your session and two, I like the kind of the organic nature of the, the kit that I have right now so I don't use too many effects on it um, but you do have um, you know five different effect settings and then you also have presets up here as well each channel like it I go to uh, right Tom here you can go to your toms and they've got different um, presets for for each drum and you can go through those and, and find what you like um, and then you also have like your fader and your panning uh, basic level stuff and then at the end of the mixer you've got all your bus channels if you want to send you know toms for effects or whatever um, to you know add group effects you've got all your bus channels so lots of different stuff going on there in the mixer I keep it pretty simple I don't use too many effects or you know too much bleed stuff I keep it per, pretty uh, pretty dumbed down for the most part there so that would be the mixer uh, let's move on to the grooves tab now in the groove tab you got Pretty much all of your pre-programmed MIDI beats. Um, I don't use them that often because I do all of my own programming, but there is certain things I will use, like if there's a blast beat and I want it to sound more human, um, they've got really good blasts in here with all the, the different velocities and stuff, so I might drag and drop that. So let's say, for example, I wanted a blast, bleed, blast beat. Go here to, in the uh, DFH settings, there's uh, grind and blast beat and you can preview these if you would like so if, let's see I'm gonna hit play down here brutal good and you can change the speed right here uh half time uh one times faster two times there we go that makes some sense yeah and that's on a hi-hat so if you want that same blast and you want it on say a ride symbol uh you would go to main ride here Say you want it with a bell. So there you go. That's how you choose different grooves, and uh, the options are endless with that. There's a lot of different grooves in here, and a lot of different fills, and entire stomp songs even. But you, know, you got all kinds of stuff. Um, but like I said, I go into my MIDI editor and I program a lot of this stuff myself. Each one of these notes in here was you know clicked in with a mouse so uh, time consuming but more accurate to what I'm doing next up you got mapping and this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier about the uh, layering of drums so if you right click on any of these drums over here um, it'll give you this little orange option um, before I get too ahead of myself this is my snare drum note right here, which is this this guy. If I wanted to join these snare drums onto this snare drum to create a new snare drum, I'm going to drag this right function over here, put it onto the, um, what key that snare is triggering on, and then click join. And by clicking that, it's going to join those two snare drum sounds together. So I've got three snare drums, all of those sounds are joined together by using that same function. Um, same thing with the kick. Uh, so this kick drum right here is triggering this MIDI note. If I right click on that and drag this over, I could join that on there as well. And that's already been done, so I'm not going to do it. That's pretty much everything that I use. The bounce and settings functions up here, I never really have touched on, and I don't feel that I need to because it's kind of already taken care of. Um, that pretty much sums it up. We went over, you know, all the uh, the X drums and how to um, change the pitch of all the X drums or change the different expansions they come from, and then also um, how to layer X drums to get 
new sounds and then also how to use the um, the mixer to you know adjust bleed levels and then all of your effects and then there's the grooves where you can drag and drop pretty much everything that you need to uh, to write a song uh, and make things a lot easier. So if you guys have any questions, please hit me up with any uh, messages or comments and I will try to answer them. Um, if there's anything you guys would like to see more of or any questions you have about Superior Drummer, let me know and I will try and do my best to uh, fulfill your needs. Alright, thanks guys for watching and take care.